Hold on to your index cards and let's move on. Respect one another. What does that look like? Be kind. If you've ever watched The Ellen Show, you know that she ends at every episode with, be kind to one another. That one little sentence made up of five words packs a punch, doesn't it? What if we all did exactly that and were kind to each other? What if this caught on worldwide? Imagine the impact it would have. Well, it all starts with you. And in this class, it's an expectation that I of. What you say matters. Here at school, what you say is heard and seen by everyone. In this class, we will respect each other, and that means no put-downs and no offensive language. A put-down would be anything said or done to make any student feel bad about themselves. Even if you think it's just a joke or you think you are just kidding to be funny, don't say it or don't do it. Not everyone will see it that way. Go above and beyond to respect others. And that means stay far away from putting others down in our class. Also, using offensive language like curse words is not allowed in our class. This means even words that sound like curse words or sound like bad phrases but aren't the whole thing. Just don't do it. Another way that we can support one another in the classroom is by encouraging each other to speak our minds, share the answers we got, or voice an idea or concern. Oftentimes, students remain silent even when they have something brilliant or amazing to say because they're afraid it will seem dumb to their peers. We can support each other by making our classroom a safe environment. If we like something someone says, we can show them our support by snapping our fingers. Not to distract them, but to say, hey, I agree with that. We can also use our body language, like smiling and nodding to encourage students to speak their mind freely without the fear of embarrassment. We learn best when we feel safe and included, not just physically, but emotionally safe too. In our class, you have the right to express your opinions. There may be times when you disagree with students in our class. I welcome that. We won't always agree. Sometimes there are heated discussions about our past, our ideas, government, politics, and even what's going on in our world today with current events. We all come from different backgrounds and different families, and it is our job to respect one another even when we do not see eye to eye. When we disagree, the norm in our classroom will be to use respectful language. For example, you may say, I see what Frank was saying, but I don't agree with him. If you look at it from a different perspective, and then share your own opinion. If someone expresses their opinion and you don't like it, that does not give permission to make them feel bad for thinking or showing disrespect for thinking any differently than you. Rolling your eyes, snickering, or showing disrespect through body language will not be tolerated. No one has the right to treat others with disrespect. Remember what kid president says, I disagree with you, but I still like you as a person who is a human being and I will treat you like that because if I didn't, it would make everything bad and that's what lots of people do and it is lame. During our class discussions and activities, you are expected to be an active participant and contribute to the class discussion. I want to hear what you have to say. Make all your questions and comments relevant to the current discussion. If we're not talking about the same subject or something closely related to the same topic, leave it to share for another time. If your question or comment is off topic and you cannot just remain quiet because it's just that good, write it on a sticky note or in your history notebook and ask it later. We do a lot of projects and activities in this class and they are a lot of fun. But if you lose my trust during any activity by being silly, off task, or even disrespectful, you will no longer be allowed to participate for that day and you will only watch. And believe me, that is a whole lot less fun. When someone is speaking in our classroom, we can respect one another by listening to what they say. 
using eye contact and looking at the person who is sharing, and use our body language to show we care what they have to say. Not that. When I am teaching, show me with your body that you are listening and that you are hearing what I am saying. You're ready to learn. Body language shows respect by not slouching in our chair, turning our body toward the person speaking and choosing not to use our body to distract away from the person talking. So let's practice with an activity. Listen to all the directions first. With the person sitting across from you, choose who will be person A and who will be person B. Person A will be the talker person first and person B will be the listener. I will give you a question to respond to and person A will answer it by talking for a total of 60 seconds. While person B says nothing but listens and smiles and nods and uses eye contact and body language that supports person A while they're talking. And then we'll switch. Pause the video so we can practice. Respecting others means respecting your teachers too. And that means me. In the same way that we show respect by listening with eye contact and body language to each other, I expect you to do the same for me when I am teaching. Respecting me when I am teaching also means not talking when I am talking. Just wait until I give you an opportunity to ask questions or to share something. You can also raise your hand and wait until I call on you. Calling out in our class without permission while I am speaking is disrespectful and I won't tolerate it. Another way that you can show respect to me is by staying in your seat and at your desk while I'm teaching. If I'm in front of the class speaking, it is not a good time to get up and go sharpen your pencil or ask to go to the bathroom. Wait for a break time to do that or raise your hand to ask if it is okay, if it's an emergency. Wait for a break, then it's okay. The best times to go to the bathroom are during independent work time, after you finish an activity, or between classes. Do not go to the bathroom while I am teaching or giving directions. Wait for that break. When you have been given permission, or it is a break between instruction and an activity, use the bathroom sign-out sheet. Write your name, the time you left, and the time you returned. You should not be at the bathroom longer than 10 minutes. If I notice a pattern where you are leaving a lot, we may have to chat because I don't want you missing my class. Also, you must have a bathroom pass in the hallways going to and from the bathrooms. I have passes that you can take with you, but you must return them. I can also write you a pass at the back of your planner for not only the bathroom, but the nurse or the office. And you can take that with you if, you, if we run out of uh, bathroom passes. Teachers will stop you in the hall if you do not have a pass, and you will be sent to the dean. So make sure that you leave the class with a pass if you are leaving in the middle of a block. Okay, then there's this thing about water. Sure, you can sign out and get a drink of water, but please just bring a water bottle to class so that you won't be thirsty and you can stay in my class. Respecting your teacher also means doing your work when asked. Refusal to do work is defiance. Defiance is disrespectful. My job is to prepare you for the real world. In the real world, you will need to get a job to support yourself. You will have a boss. Your boss will not give you projects that you like always. Sometimes you won't like them or you won't want to do them. As your teacher, unlike your practice boss, I want you to be an employee who works hard and makes their boss proud. In fact, I hope to train you to become your own boss. But as your own boss, you will have to push yourself to complete work, sometimes work that you don't like. That is why the work we do here at school and for homework is preparation for what you will have to do in the future as an adult. Having a positive can-do attitude will make your life easier and happier even when you have to complete tasks you don't like or don't feel like doing. That means no whining in my class, none. I can always give you more homework and less fun assignments. 
Ownership time called OT is something we do at Mercer to keep students accountable to complete their work. It is for students who don't complete their work in class, which is often a choice. Students who choose to do something else rather than work. OT is for students who don't complete their homework. My personal policy is if you do not complete three homework assignments in a row, I assign you ownership time to catch up because you will fall behind. OT is also for students who are absent from class a lot or for a very long time and they do not take initiative to stay up with Google Classroom while they are gone or did not come to see me during resource to catch up on what they missed. So Monday after school at Mercer is ownership time for sixth grade. It keeps kids accountable and trains them for the real world. No cheating this year. Guys, this disrespects yourself and others. Try to be prepared for tests and quizzes and study to be ready. But if you don't know it, you don't know it. A good grade is not worth it if you cheated for it. Be honest, no matter what. Do not share your answers with others from tests. Cheating is a serious offense. In college, if you want to go to college, you'll get thrown out if you cheat. So practice honesty now, here in middle school, and don't fall into this temptation that has the potential to ruin your reputation and your life.